Japan has always always been notably prolific and successful with her own style of animation, which became known um, in the English language initially as Japanation. Um, Japanimation, actually. Japanimation and eventually shortened to anime. Uh, in general, anime was developed with limited um, animation techniques that really put more emphasis on aesthetic and composition other than movement. It looked more very, it looked more cinematic in every way, and it's a lot of, uh, and it really inspired a lot of what filmmakers still use today um, in making live action films, especially more action based and superhero films. Um, specifically, the Wachowski brothers who created the Matrix um, attribute a lot of their their uh, initial look and, and the storyboards to just basic anime. In the '60s, several um, anime shows got played in the U.S. and other countries, including Astro Boy and Mach Go Go Go, also known as Speed Racer, which, if, which incidentally got uh, made uh, into a live action film by the Wachowski brothers um, in 2008, which I really did like. Um, so now we're getting to the 60s. So the anti-establishment countercultural boom at the end of the 60s and 70s, uh, in the 60s, uh, starting into the 70s, obviously impacted Hollywood in general. Um, and it had a very significant impact on animation. Um, one of the very first examples of this was Ward Gimble's parody of Mickey Mouse in Vietnam. The less uh, political parody, Bambi Meets Godzilla by Marv Mullen, is considered a classic. Um, I'm not going to play it, but if you get a chance, go watch that. The popularity of Psychedelia reportedly made um, the 1969 re-release of Disney's Fantasia more popular than ever, especially amongst teenagers and college students, and the film started to make a profit. Similarly, Disney, uh, Disney's Alice in Wonderland became popular with TV screenings in this period with its 1974 theatrical release, very much in the same way that most things in the 60s and 70s would have been treated because it had a very psychedelic, drug-oriented kind of vibe to it. Um, also, very influential and part of this uh, era of this kind of psychedelia revolution, the Beatles animated feature film Yellow Submarine, which came out in 1968 showcased, showcased um, a really hip, um, very modern, you know, trippy um, look at um, a dis, uh, obviously a very, uh, be, uh, you know, taking the Beatles to a whole new level in, in their songs and kind of storytelling about like going kind of inside their music. Um, and obviously very different from Disney. They were purposely trying to be non-Disney with this. Its distinctive design came from art director um, Heinz Edelman, although often attributed to Peter Max. Peter Max is a big pop artist. Um, and even though Peter Max supposedly was called initially to do it, he didn't end up doing it. Um, but it's still up in the air if he actually was called initially. Uh, that said, the art of Peter Max um, after the movie came out um, started to sell more, uh, more than ever. Ralph Bakshi. Um, um, thought that the idea of grown men sitting in cubicles drawing butterflies floating over a field of flowers while American planes are dropping bombs in Vietnam and kids are marching in the streets is ludicrous. He therefore created a, a more socio-political type of animation starting with Fritz the Cat, which, is, which actually came out in 1972, which is based on Robert Crumb's comic books and the first animated feature to receive an X rating. The X rating was used to promote the film when it became the highest grossing independent animated film of all time. Um, Bakshi found new success with the fantasy film, uh, films like Wizards, which came out in 77, and The Lord of the Rings, which came out in 78. Both used rotoscoping for a lot of the battle scenes. Um, in fact, there's a lot of animation um, techniques that came out of what he was doing at the time specifically the Lord of the Rings. And um, Bakshi described what he was going for was real illustration as opposed to cartoons for a film that he wanted to be really, really true to Tolkien's work. Um, I'm gonna show you a trailer from this, which um, really at the time was groundbreaking and it wasn't like anything else out there. <laughs> 